Spencer, what's going on? Um, I'm getting into character, trying to live out my sci-fi dreams as a little BB-8. What, what does that have to do with laying on the floor? <laughs> it's coming down. I'm broken. You did it. You're L. Hi. What's Hi. up? You're the you're the newest member of the team. Yes. yes. I started in June. So what are you working on? Right now, I am working on the plants Ooh. and rock formations that are going into Astroneer, and also finagling around with the foliage and the wind effects on them and how they kind of move around when yeah. the character interacts with it so so it's like one of the coolest little updates that i'm really excited about um we haven't really talked about it publicly yet that's why i'm coming to you oh wow yes um do you have anything pivot painted that you could pull up yeah anything let that... me just super quick fix it turn off the things yes I just need to turn that thing off. Also, hi. Oh, I was about to say hi to Markiplier. <sighs> say hi to Markiplier. Yeah, can we say hi to Markiplier? Yeah, I'm just watching him being a badass on Resident Evil 7. He's he's a nice he's a nice lad. Yeah, I actually was watching him play a little bit of our game, really early stages too. But yeah. Yes. Anywho, here is one plants I'm working on. I just added the wind effects on it. Okay, hold on. Of course, someone's grinding coffee right now. I'm just, I'm here to yell at you for ruining the vlog right now with, the, with grinding coffee. I'm just kidding, it's fine. You can grind all the coffee you want. Hey, do you want the game made? Because you need coffee to make the game. No, no coffee, no game. Fair enough. Okay. So, this is one of the plant formations and plants I've made so far. Sorry, I punched your cup. No worries. It's a, it's a sturdy mug. It can handle it. Nice. Yeah. So, the whole point is to make all of the foliage sort of look realistic when it's moving in the wind, right? Yeah, basically you gotta think at the base, at the bottom of this thing, it's gonna be really sturdy, really connected to the ground, and as it goes up, it becomes a little bit thinner, a little more whimsical, and has a little more effects on the wind, so. Yeah, it looks, stuff, yeah. It looks awesome. Yeah, thanks. Also, new plants. Plants, oh. There's so many new plants. Actually, this is the best part. Uh -oh. If I change the hue, the whole thing Whoa. changes as well. Yeah, so this is what will look like based on the different color variants of the planets. Oh, that's awesome. So this is what the default one I chose, but mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. Based on the color scheme, it just adjusts yeah. and then it looks all cool. Wow, nice. Now it looks like that. That's what it would look like if the planet was yellow. Yes, that's awesome. Yeah, so that's basically what I'm working on right now. Aren't you working on a bunch of rocks too? A bunch of Big yes, boy rocks. I did make some rocks. I gotta find them first. Sorry, I'm just like. No worries. I made this rock guy. Ooh. Not too long ago. Cool. And. I know you're doing a bunch of sets of these and stuff. Yeah, this is like, as you can see, I think it's yeah, it's version A of the medium size. We have different size variants. Like this one is Whoa. a triple X, a double X. Yeah. Actually. So this one is ginormous, and the idea is just like sinking into the ground, and you're able to rotate around and reuse it a lot because yeah. it doesn't look too tileable. It's not super repetitive. So. Yeah, it looks awesome. Yeah. So that's basically what I've been working on for the past M month? month and a half. Almost no, two months. Two months. Two months since June. Yeah. Huh. Well, thanks for showing it to me. I appreciate it. This is your first vlog appearance, so welcome. Thanks, L. signing out. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> What's up, Aaron? Oh, well, not a whole lot. Just Are you sure not a whole completely lot? Completely overhauling our entire crafting progression and resource set. Yes. <laughs> Little change. Sounds like a lot. I guess the TLDR is we've long known that our number of resources was too limited to have a full 
long-term progression in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, it was really hard to get players off-world by luring them with exclusive resources when we had so few to begin with. Um, and likewise, we knew that the kind of crafting progression flattened out way too early, and yeah. we wanted to have more of a long tail on that too. Um, so the last few months, we've been working on building up both of those in a really sort of integrated way. So at the beginning, you have the smelter. Um, that's still pretty much the way it works, but we've expanded the number of things you can smelt and the number of things you'll mine out of the ground to smelt quite a bit. Um, there's, I don't know, somewhere around maybe twice as many metals, including the three that we shipped in our last update. Um, but we're also smelting things that aren't metals. Um, you can now smelt organic and get carbon, which is going to replace coal in the game. The mineral extractor is a much bigger change in terms of its role in the game. So functionally, it works the same way. The number of things it can extract has gone down quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's specifically limited to the sort of common resources that you're going to find on every planet. And so you're no longer going to be able to sort of bypass going on exploration runs on each planet and finding unique things. What this will let you do, though, is supplement those expeditions with mass production of the commons that you're going to continue to need throughout the game. What used to be Catalyzer and is now the Chemistry Lab. So this was actually, from the very beginning of this module, kind of the direction we'd hoped to take it, and it's just taken us a while to, to finally get around to it. Um, yeah, I actually remember us talking about it, like in a and a or something. And being like, Oh, did we? Yeah, like, eventually this will be a place where, like, science happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, now's the time. <laughs> so the Chemistry Lab is a combining module. You'll take two usually different, um, occasionally the same resources in, and you'll get a composite resource out. Um, It's sort of split into simple composites and more complex composites, which require a fuel in addition to the two ingredients. And the fuels, among other things, it's different because you have multiple uses that you'll get from each fuel canister. Um, So instead of fully consuming it, you can give it one canister and make five of those things before you have to replenish. Got it. And that takes us to the last module. This one probably doesn't look very familiar, um, but this was the fuel condenser that was. But this will give you access to a set of gases from each planet's atmosphere that are unique to that atmosphere. And there's some overlap there, but the concentrations are always going to vary a bit. And so alongside having the deposit resources split up amongst the planets a little more, the gases are really going to drive you at the tail end of your crafting progression to go planet to planet and get the different atmospheric resources. So that's the the crafting progression side of it. Yeah, it's cool. And and I know, I mean, we don't have to ruin it for people, but there's also going to be a lot of new resources. I actually, I'm actually looking over Samantha's shoulder right now, and I feel like the spreadsheet's up with a lot of resources. Um, yes, yes it is. I mean, I can... Blur! I can just this out. out. And on the other side of things, we've completely updated our catalog so that you can now see, before you unlock something, what the printing recipe is going to be. Nice. That's um, a huge change. We've also reorganized it. It's now based on the printer that you get the item from instead of um, sort of gameplay categories that we had before. And so it's... Very simple now, if you want to know where to go, it's just going to be the same as the, the category in the catalog. So yeah, I know excited. this has been a huge effort by a lot of, a lot of people. Um, it has kind of consumed the team by and large for the past month, so. Yeah, but all are super welcome changes, so I'm excited. Yeah, I can't wait to get this in everybody's hands and start getting the feedback. Yes, well thanks for showing it to me. Absolutely. I'm going to go bother Samantha really fast. All right. I'm going to be an opportunist right now. I didn't give you any warning that I was going to come over here. No, but you're always welcome. Uh, what you doing? So I am going, I'm doing a pass on the research um, costs, the unlock costs. Ah. One of the things that we did for this release with adding new resources was it basically requires a little bit more exploration. So you're going to spend a little bit more time on foot, a little bit more time in rovers, um, looking for resources, 
jumping to other planets. And so to respond to that, so we've, we've sort of pushed the game in this one direction, to respond to that and to not make it feel like it's sort of artificially drawn out, mm -hmm. um, I'm tuning the, the unlock costs. Um, I'm bringing, I'm, I'm doing a comparison right now of what the costs were and what the costs, what I'm proposing the costs to be. Balance pass. Yes. Um, and it's looking like the proposed costs are going to be a little bit smaller. There'll be a little bit less manual researching to do. Um, um, but this is also in preparation for any other research changes that we make right. in, in the near future for 1.0. And then the addition of new items and stuff. Too. Yeah, we still have a lot of items on our on our on our asset list that we um, are expecting to go into 1.0, but are not coming in this CU. Right. So sort of. Pre a little bit of responding to how to make the current CU of the game as good as it can be, um, to, n to get out of the player's way from experiencing the new content and the new gameplay loops, um, but also not, not remove what's really satisfying about research. Yes. So um, research, the role of research is maybe, was maybe a little bit um, more predominant in the past, and so it's getting a little bit smaller, but it, I think it fits really harmoniously in with the rest of the systems. Awesome. Um, and so I'm, that's why I'm living in spreadsheets, because it's just numbers, <laughs> numbers, numbers. Well, thanks for talking to me. Thank you for okay. letting me overburden you with information. It's totally great. That's what the internet craves. Yes, the internet wants all the information. Hey, what's up? Uh, the big thing I want to talk about is PAX. We're going to be in the Indie Mega Booth. Thank you so much to the Indie Mega Booth team for believing in us throughout the development of Ashenir, PAX West in Seattle, uh, booth 644, 644, come hang out with us. We're gonna have a lot of cool things. Um, plus you'll get to hang out with us, which will be really fun. So the first thing, you'll walk away with something cool from Exo Dynamics that'll also have your name on it. So that's really cool. There's been a lot of talk about Terrain 2.0. Um, PAX will be the first time you get to, your hands on it. So we'll have a new planet at PAX that'll be playable on the floor. We'll have more details about that soon, but uh, the time is now. The time is upon us to start showing off some of that new stuff. So if you come by, you're gonna get to get a cool thing from Exodynamics. You're gonna get to play a new planet in the game with a whole bunch of other new things. All of the things that are in this vlog are also gonna be in that build, so you'll get to try all those things out. And you'll also get a, a lot of cool high fives and pounds from us. So uh, work on your pound game because I don't, I don't play when it comes to, to, you know, pounds and different themed ones. So work on that before you come hang out with us. But definitely come hang out with us at PAX West. We'll be on the fourth floor in the Indie Mega booth, booth number 644. Come hang out with us, get a cool thing, play a new planet. And we'll see you then. Thanks. Hi. Hi. That wasn't that wasn't a very Mr. Excitement greeting that I just got there. <laughs> Hi. Wait, 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 hold on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hi. Yes. Now we're talking. Okay. Sorry, good. I wasn't ready. I had my headphones on. No, no, no leaks from you. Sorry. You're not allowed. You're not allowed to leak yet. Wait, do you want to show no, you're not supposed to talk about that. <laughs> That's it, we're done here. We just got finished talking for two minutes about how we're not going to talk about something. And Samantha and just turns around and is like, like, Hey, are, are we, we talking gonna... about the thing? <laughs> I thought you were talking about... Andrew, what are your tips for a great vlog interview? Hit the points. GTFO. <laughs> right? Yes. Perfect. Stop talking about the snake. Cut.